Hi, this is Dr. White again, and uh, today we're going to go ahead and go to work a little bit on uh, putting together a little bit of footage uh, and editing it. Um, so let me go ahead and pull this up and we'll see what we have here. Uh, first of all, like last time, we went ahead and we pulled up the Premiere Workspace so you can see all the different areas. So um, I actually have some really great footage that we're going to cut together today. So let me see if we can get this put together. So first of all, this is actually some 4K footage that was shot by one of the cinema students. And um, it's some really, really beautiful stuff. If I can get access to what I'm after here. Um, let's see here. May not be able to, but we'll take a look here. Oh, it looks like she took it. Oh, that's okay. So I've got some other footage that I've been working on that we'll go ahead and we'll use those. So this is a Canon. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab some of this stuff that's marked private. I'm going to go ahead and find the footage here. Usually it's marked in the playlist. Um, but in this case, it may not be. It looks like it's in the stream section. Okay, so I'm going to select all six of these clips. Um, actually, I think uh, we'll go here. We're going to leave one of them because I know that's just a test clip. So I'm going to go back to Premiere. And I'm going to put this into Import Media to start. And now it should uh, come right in. So what I'm going to do is, this is actually for our kiosk monitor, so I'm going to go ahead and, and assemble these together. These should be really cute, so we'll kind of take a look. Uh, first of all, I'm going to take a look here, and we'll select one of, the, one of these. This looks like it's from the editorial staff. I'm going to drop that here, and we'll see what we have. Hey, how many police reports do you want? Um, I'm going to have to be juicy. Yeah, come on, man. I saw somebody get tased on Saturday. Woo! Did you actually? Okay, so obviously we've got some students really excited about about uh, somebody getting teased, but we'll go ahead and. I think we're going to start right before the camera movement. Probably about. There we go. So I'm going to use the arrow keys to kind of back up a few frames to kind of get to where I need to be. I'm going to use the the. Um, the pointer command here, the selection tool to go ahead and do a drag. So I'm going to come down here and you'll see this red arrow that appears. I'm going to drag this right to what we call the wireframe line, which uh, is what allows us to go ahead and navigate. And I'm going to pull this all over to the beginning of the timeline. Um, so here I'm going to go ahead and remove the audio because it's not something that we need. I'm going to go ahead and do a right click on this and hit the unlink function. This will go ahead and allow me to separate video and audio here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete just the audio line. This will increase the render time. Also what it's going to do is it's going to make it a little bit easier to navigate um, as well. So first of all we have this and then I'm going to go ahead and I have some footage of some other students. So I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to drop it. And you're going to see here that on video line one we have this and then audio line one we have that. So again I'm going to unlink and I'm going to go ahead and delete the audio here to remove this. Um, what I'll do is the cut here, um, and it depends on how we want to do cuts and transitions. I think at one point they looked at the camera, oh, and then they, we want to get them as they've looked away because obviously that's, you know, kind of bad filmmaking, you know, and look at the camera. So we'll move this over and then we'll go ahead and we'll do this a little bit here. Wonderful. Okay, and then what we'll do is let's go ahead and we're going to grab, we've got some nice footage of the professor here working with the students, so we'll get this in here too. And uh, Liz is a really dynamite professor. She's here working with the, the, with, uh, the stater staff. So we'll kind of go back here a little bit. I'm going to hit this. And Assignments. I'm trying to keep track. That's the best I can do. For this week. I'm doing it for the entire semester. And that way we can, I think, go back and look and see. And she, she kind of knew she was being recorded, so we've got some really nice hand gesture here as she's going. Um, even though she's not teaching layout here, that's kind of one of the things that we were kind of hoping to show. So as we go here... And then this looks really great as we kind of get this footage in here. Wonderful. And I'm going to go ahead and move this over because she looks at the camera. We'll get this right here, kind of move this over. Wonderful. Okay. Um, I think we also have some really, some really nice footage here. It looks like probably... Okay, this is kind of more like all of the students, all the writing students here working at once. We'll hit unlink again, remove this audio. And what we'll do is we'll 
kind of find some good transition pieces here. There we go. I like the activity of the girl in the background, so I think we're going to move this over here a little bit, see what we have. So we'll pull this back. Wonderful. And then we've got this. There's a nice little piece of someone working here. I love these over-the-shoulder, these uh, little cameras. They shoot so well. Oh, did you want to... Oh, that's really cute. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. Really cute. So we'll pull this over. I think I like it better like here. So if we can kind of get it in kind of mid laugh, I think probably a little better. A little bit different continuity here. Okay, and we'll go ahead and we'll pull this over. And I think that looks pretty good. I think I'll get one more of these. And I think we've got kind of a nice little, oops, it won't pull. Oh, that's because I'm trying to pull the wrong thing. That's actually the time one. Let's see if we've got, I think this one looks pretty good. Let's pull this one here. I'm going to unlink this, and then I think we can probably kind of get something that looks a little different. Oh, no, I don't like that one. I think it's one we've already used to try this one. Nope, I don't like any of them. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. So what we'll do is we've got this all set up. Now, like last time, we talked a little bit about the control line. So you're going to see this red line here. This needs rendered. A neat trick that I didn't probably show you before is that you can hit enter and render the whole line. But what you can do is you can render just pieces. So if I put a parenthesis here and then move this over and put another parenthesis at a certain space, I can actually render just a small individual portion of this. Now, you'll notice that you're getting a number. It's less than 100 right now, but it'll go up to 451. But what it's doing is it's actually assembling all those frames individually. It's actually rendering all those frames individually. So as it does this, it's going to make it a lot easier for the machine to progress. And you can actually see here these little, this little green line here, uh, which is what it's rendered thus far. So now you can see that, but we obviously need to render the whole project. So let me move this over, and then I'll hit Enter again and then it'll render the, render the remainder of the project. Now, while it's working, it's always a good idea to kind of find the other things that you're looking for. So I think what we uh, can do is we, we've got, you know, different music or other, other things that we can do, but I think it might be fun to go ahead and uh, go ahead and add a graphic to this. Now, the graphics are, are done in layers. So as you can see here, we've got video one. We also have the audio layer here too, but we can put an additional video layer on here. This used to be really difficult in the other prior versions of Premiere. They had the legacy title maker and all this other stuff, and it was really, really hard. The trick to this now though, is just to really make sure that what you're doing is that you're actually selecting the right portions. And I'll kind of explain a little bit here. So if I click on the, the T here, the capital letter T for text, I can go up here and I can um, make a little uh, a box here. And this is right in the video. Now, as you do this, you'll notice a new dialog box or a new graphic box appears. And it's going to show unrendered. But what we're going to do is I'm going to type in uh, the Wayne Stater here. Which is great. So, I mean, it looks really good. And I can make changes to this, but you'll notice you're not seeing any of the effects controls that we need. So, one, we want to make sure the box is selected. Then I want to go to the effect controls portion of this. Now, when I go here, I'm going to hit Control A and select the box. Now, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and adjust the size. And here we're able to see the different the size changes, which are here as well. Now I can do some other things, and by clicking on any of these blue, these blue, um, 
you know, numerals, I'm able to go ahead and scroll left or right to go ahead and gain things. Now this is a stretch control, which allows us to go ahead and current and stretch and go ahead and put things together, you know, kind of based on appearance. Um, also, if there's multiple layers of text, we can change that. There's a lot of things. You're seeing like, in you know, uh, italics, other controls, which appear there as well. Now, you can also do some, some things such as stretch and a few other, you know, functions as well. Um, I think this one's actually visible stretch, I think, on this particular one. I can't. Oh, that doesn't appear to be. It looks like it's a, a, one of the kerning controls, so I'll hit control on this. Okay, so once we've got that kind of set up, there are some things we can do. So if I go here, um, I can go ahead and under scale, I can open this up. Scale is a little bit different creature here. You're, you're going to see scale width or uniform scale. I can uncheck this. Now what I can do is once I've got this, let's say I want to go ahead and control the scale height. I'm able to actually kind of stretch. See, I'm able to stretch and squeeze with this to be able to adjust the height. Now it does in fact kind of move the box, but it's just one of those things. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit Control Z, put it back the way it was. But I can also go ahead and change the color, and the color is a very simple thing to do. You have the fill and the stroke. Now the fill is actually the color of the font itself, and then the stroke is actually an outline box. Uh, the best things to use, especially for things like this, I like to use yellow primarily, because it's easy to see. It's, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, a little bolder, so I'm gonna hit OK. Then to, I'm going to add a stroke to this, and one of the cool things is I can check this. Right now it's got a white stroke, but I'm going to use the eyedropper and then select something dark. So maybe I'm going to find something black and select it. Then I can actually go ahead and control the outline of this, and it, it's got different numbers. I'm going to go here about 13. Now I'm going to go ahead and click someplace, and now you look, you got this really cool looking font. It's already there, and I can actually fade this up and down on the screen. So I'm going to pull this over. And let's go ahead and add some of those transitions that we talked about. So the, we're going to go ahead and fade up. I'm going to hit uh, here, uh, add a default transition. And then what I'm going to do is as soon as the default transition is ended, I'm going to go ahead and have it fade up to the graphic and go ahead and, and just fade up and fade down. Now what I'm doing is I'm clicking right and clicking add a default transition. Now as I hit the space bar here, notice that it fades up. And then it will fade back down, and then we're able to do that. Now, right now, we've got it set to take from one thing to another, which is really fun. We can do some really cool things with that. Um, this footage is, is fun footage. You know, it's easy. Now, again, you're seeing that we've got an unrendered section, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the, the Enter key. I try to do this frequently. Um, I've had some really big projects. I've made a feature film this past summer. It was an hour and 53 minute long feature film. And because of that, things had to be constantly rendered. So it is, you know, one of the, the processes. So now what we're looking at is we've got some great looking footage here, but I think we probably need to start to explore uh, color correction. Uh, there are a few things we can do in color correction, um, and I'll explain to those. We're not going to get into real, real heavy color correction because, you know, for this course it's pretty simple. But let's go ahead and we're going to select the first... Piece here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to color. Now, these were shot on Canon cameras. Uh, these are really good digital Canon cameras. I've had really great success with these. Um, they've worked absolutely dynamite. So now, now we're in the color correction section. What I typically do first is try to find white first. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the eyedropper. And if there's something a little bit white here, I'm going to click it. Here's a piece of paper. Wonderful. And then that's going to go ahead and give you the proper warmth and balance that you probably are going to need to give us a pretty true color. Now once you've done that, you're going to see that they've, they've made a couple of very slight adjustments. I'm going to hit automatic. Now the automatic uh, adjusted the blacks, gave us a little bit more depth there, you know, did a little correction in the whites, so it does look pretty gosh darn good. Now if this was a cinematic project, you might want to put a lookup table, that's what this LUT is, and for example, lookup tables are there to emulate other things. For example, if you wanted to emulate um, an Ari Alexa cinema camera, you can go ahead and click to this default section and it will go ahead and do that. Now, of course, from there you'd have to hit automatic and try to get something a little different. But let me go ahead and hit Control Z twice here and uh, set this back. It's going to take a moment because that was a fairly complicated maneuver that we just made. Or not. Maybe it's not going to let me. Maybe it doesn't like me anymore. Ooh, uh-oh, did I force a crash? I might have, I hope not, but that could happen as well. These machines are a little bit, you know, a little stable. I think that was a pretty big demand, which I just made of the system, kind of taxed it a little bit. 
But what lookup tables are is they are there to emulate looks. Um, they can emulate, you know, other cameras. They can go ahead and emulate other things. Um, there's a lot of different things that, that they can do. But um, as an example of some quality editing while the system resets itself, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come out of here and I'll, I'll show you some, some other work that some of the students did this week. So I think you'll be very impressed by this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over. I'll go ahead and I'll, oops, if I can, oh, there we go. Get that down. All right, let's take a look. So what I'm going to do is this is actually a sneak peek um, from a movie that's being produced right now by the students. Uh, this is actually for a romance movie that's being made, that's being produced. And uh, actually, the writer is Shelby Hagard and the actress that you're seeing here in this scene. Um, this was a really, really fun piece. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And you're going to notice some, some things, not only just about the shooting, but about the color. So this has great shooting, great color. As you're noticing, there's really great depth of field here. So you're seeing some of a blurriness. These were shot with cinema lenses, which is really cool. And then in the foreground, you're seeing everything which is in focus. Um, this was always, re this was meticulously, you know, pre-designed. So I'm going to hit play. So let's back up a little bit, and I'm going to shut the audio off, but we're going to talk a little bit about the quality of editing here. This is really good work, and Allie Boyd, who, who, does, who did this, is one of our more talented students. So what I'm going to do here is if we take a look, you're noticing that everything is very in focus. This is really, really nice. And this is actually um, shot with a 50 millimeter cinema lens on a Blackmagic Ursa 4K digital cinema camera, a very, very expensive camera. This is about a $12,000 setup that you're looking at here. So as we press play, you're noticing now there's a change in the lens. This is an 85 millimeter Rokinon lens. Um, and you'll notice that this is out of focus and this is in focus, but you'll notice the feel of this is really fun. Um, these two are dynamite together. They have absolutely no off-screen chemistry at all, but on screen they're just dazzling. So it's it's really great. So what we're doing here is we've got this this great feel, and as this goes, what you're seeing here too is this is uh, again like a 50 millimeter lens, but you'll notice the use of shadow and the use of light. This is a little overexposed, but it's supposed to be. And we could have corrected this in the editor, but we chose not to for artistic purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play again. Now here, what you're seeing is again a 50 millimeter lens shooting this very wide shot. You'll notice the different greens and contrasts. So when this was color corrected, all of these different shades of green were very meticulously assembled and put in. Um, it looks really, really great. So as we go through this, and then of course, he's a ginger, which makes it very difficult to shoot. But I mean, I, I, I like this. Now, you're noticing that the characters are now out of focus where the background is in focus. This is purposeful because when the edit comes and we change perspective, um, they'll, be, they'll be out of focus in this perspective change here. And we have a perspective change. Now you notice out of focus again. So now they'll come into focus and then back out of focus to get that feel. A lot of the focusing is part of the dramatic feeling of the editing because this is a romance and it, it's got to be edited a particular way. But I think from the editing standpoint, the important aspect here is the transition that we have in size. So what you're seeing here is you notice how seamless that transition looks even though we're jumping, you know, the, a 180 degree line, we're jumping that line to get that perspective. It's very different. So when we take a look at this, we're able to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And you're seeing this as they walk off. Now you notice they were in focus momentarily, but now everything is out of focus. And this out of focus is purposeful as we kind of go through. It's this so we can actually get 
what we need from the characters and you know get what we need to make this work and very much looks like an oil painting you know maybe an abstract oil painting um, this is very common especially if female producers currently many of the female producer directors are inspired by still art and what's happened here is we've taken this moving image and we've been able to go ahead and take it and by using the editor and using the color colorization system emulated this great scene um, this is very inspired by like Lost in Translation by Sofia Coppola and other such works, which is, you know, very, you know, more of a, a common thing. So I think what we'll do is today, that's kind of a, a nice little introduction to that. I'll expand on color a little bit more in the next lecture, but I think for, for now we're going to do this. So make sure that you're shooting at least some cell phone footage and getting it cut together. And go ahead and render a little video out for me, and I would love to see it. So you can, you know, email it or find a way for me to view it. That would be dynamite. Okay. So again, uh, this is Dr. White. I hope things are going great.